We've been releasing chuffs in Jersey since 2013, um, after an absence of 100 years. We believe the absence is because they were restricted with their food sources. Chuffs are corvids that are specially adapted. They've got this long slender bill for getting into the insects in the soil, into animal dung. Um, and without access to that, then they, they don't have a food source. And in Jersey, a hundred odd years ago, people were managing the land more. Um, they were keeping sheep for knitting jumpers, which is quite a popular industry. And they were managing the coastland a lot more. Um, it became unprofitable and people moved inland and the land became abandoned. So bracken grew up and there was no food source for the birds. And so the chefs disappeared. And so in 2013, we started a soft release project based at Sorrel with Release Avery, using birds that we had bred in a captive breeding program at Jersey Zoo, as well as birds from Paradise Park in Cornwall. Hi, I'm Jess. Um, I was the first chuff student back in 2013. Um, I worked with the original seven birds that came over from Paradise Park in Cornwall. Um, so I helped to target train them and get them acclimatised to their new environment. I actually came back in 2015 and have been a bird keeper on the softball section for the last three years. Um, so my daily duties involve sort of daily husbandry, health checks, diet preparation. Hi, I'm Bee. I started out as a student on the bird department and then I moved over to the chuffs. I was really fortunate, I got to do a variety of tasks such as foster rearing uh, chuff chicks. I also got to do radio transmitting, um, tracking the chuffs in the winter and also looking at our first big batch of uh, wild born chicks in the wild. We started off with just six birds and with the first release we did it was testing times for both us and the birds and it was quite interesting because we didn't expect the first few birds to go straight for the quarry. Um, which they've sort of called a second home ever since. That's not unusual for chuffs. Um, they're known in Wales and in Cornwall to use abandoned um, mine shafts, quarries, um, but not normally as active in a quarry as the one in Jersey. The arrival of the chuffs has uh, seen us face some challenges, uh, being that they're nesting on some of our important equipment, um, but we're dedicated to supporting that. And in the past, we have shut down production in order to keep the, the chuff population happy and feeling safe in our quarry. We now have 35 birds flying around Jersey. Um, and the thing with that, two great bits of news. One is that our success rate in terms of survival for the birds has been a 75% throughout, which is really good. But most importantly, they've started breeding for themselves in the wild. One thing we've learned since we've been doing this that it's a lot better to release younger birds because it's all a bit of a novelty to them so when we release them out of the aviary that's almost as if that's what's meant to happen in their life. They acclimatise very quickly to the uh, curious nature of updrafts on cliffs and seagulls and ravens and horrible storms and things like that. It all comes very naturally to them uh, and we think they've acclimatised very well. Uh, if you see them on a nice warm sunny day, they look pretty idyllic up there on the grassland with the sheep. You should see them in winter when there's a howling gale and uh, force 10 and the rain's going sideways, but they're still up there on those cliffs and they, they're doing very well. We know from the projects that Durrell has worked in in Mauritius that they need a support network once you've released the birds. It's not just about breeding and throwing birds out into the wild or any animal out into the wild. You need to support them once they're out there. And so we've done that in several ways. Um, I guess the biggest way is in the supplementary feeding. Um, and so for part of the release management, the birds are actually trained to respond to a whistle. Um, when they hear the whistle, they know that food is in the area and, and they're looking for a specific target that we had trained the original group to, although they're corvids, they're super intelligent and they now just recognise uniform, they recognise people as well. And they will come and that's helped us monitor closely because they will all fly back to the release aviary that we use as a supplementary feed site. Um, and we can not only count, but we can see the individual's leg rings so we know who's there. Or we can monitor for uh, general health in terms of physical appearance. Uh, you know, sort of like, have they got a, a dodgy leg or is it an issue with a wing? Um, and then if there is, we can bring in our vet team at the zoo. Um, it's generally, the physical issues haven't really been the problem. It's actually um, 
parasites has been one and that's linked to their feeding. Because they're going for insects in the soil and the ground, these insects are hosts to a parasite, a syngamus. Um, and what we do is pre-release and post-release, we take faecal samples and we screen for syngamus. Um, and if there are specifically significant numbers um, in those faecal samples, we will treat them with a wormer pre-release. We've done that since the start of the project, we still do it now, and we've actually intensified uh, this year that project by bringing in a student to study this more. Hi, I'm Ellen, I'm the current chef student. I work with the birds up at Sorrel, as well as here in the zoo. Up at Sorrel, I help feed them, general aviary maintenance and cleaning. Um, I help with new arrivals, and it's also given me the opportunity to complete my research for university here in the lab um, on site. Uh, the great thing about this project is that it's not just helping Jersey's biodiversity and uh, bringing back the chefs, but it could also be supporting projects around the world with the techniques and the methods we've been using can be applied to other reintroductions. Um, so, for example, Jersey Zoo are working with the Java and Green Magpie now, critically endangered, it's in Indonesia. Um, and um, it is, as the name suggests, it is a magpie, it's a corvid, so it's very similar um, mindset to a chuff. And so our techniques could be used there. And we have started the captive breeding program in our zoo and with a couple of other European zoos. Um, and so uh, that's great to hear that we can help other species. <laughs>